the sheer size of Fear's hero pool is ridiculous. I, he, and, I'm and, sure and, he can play almost every hero in the game. If not, I, I, I think I think he can play every hero yeah, in the game. Yeah, and battle. and to a drafter like PPD, uh, the strategic advantage that that provides uh, he is definitely worthy of mention. He must be he must be in heaven every time he's drafting for for Fear, especially just because Fear is like, yeah, just give me whatever. I mean, I'm sure they have some strategy, especially when when it came down to this draft. But still, you have to. You have to feel good when you have somebody like Fear, who's invaluable. I mean, you can't even just talk about how much he brings to the team in terms of experience. And, and that's not to say, you know, we again, Mason, I think, played extraordinarily well. And oh, I think he got a bad yeah. rap, but... Oh, he got he got a little bit of a raw deal. I, Mason played fine. I mean, it was a little bit puzzling in the very last game they played at TI, the decision to lane him on the void. But he played well enough for that team to win. And I, I really have very little patience with people that like to pile hate onto him. But in terms of how they how fear fits into this lineup and the options that he gives this team, that really has so much talent in every role. I I do think that they are a little little bit better with him back in the lineup yeah absolutely and uh it's just exciting time for north america dota specifically yeah it's um, amazing with I, these I two teams alone we've, we've just been waiting so long for for teams like this to be uh, involved in american dota and it's great to see that they're finally coming around so well and not and not just eg i mean we we have the tier one team arguably right now but we also have a couple of very strong tier two teams and mm -hmm. some up-and-comers I, I was i was tremendously pleased to see complexity get that sponsorship yes and, you know they've been showing some improvement uh, there's a there is a great deal of depth developing in the scene right now and that's so important when you talk about these teams being reliably able to find scrims reliably able to practice and improve that's the kind of thing that leads to growth across the scene i mean if we're talking about sneaking into assassins and we consider them a tier two team then we're doing all right like if, if that team which has boasted ti3 ti4 performers as uh you know even ti2 performers as a tier two team in north america that's saying something about where we're going in north america so good yeah. stuff there i do want to point out that our tz actually has an autographed genuine golden serving crest uh that's autographed by himself on his head so that's just our tour thing god man. damn it our tour <laughs> i mean how could you possibly be surprised by that i mean this i don't is know a little interesting though that they are gonna lane fear mid and, and this is oh wow did they Center anticipate mid. this somehow I don't know. They must have. They're dual landing it right now, though. Snaking's going to get head bottom, and he, this is a really good matchup, especially with a Rubik here to help out. This could be some early kills going the way of Navi US. I think that this is a very solid landing setup, and and, and yeah. Artizzi's going to static link here. He's going to be like, yeah, I'm stealing some damage real quick, but uh, yeah, he's going to get caught out right now. Yeah, they have the two right illusions now. and the Rubik. And this, yeah. yeah, this could be a death. And Artizzi's like, oh, I'm actually in trouble uh -oh. here. In trouble. Mike is helping Two illusions to block with. He's dead. He's going to get Telkinesis back. This is going to be first blood for snaking on your Viper. Well played. The dual lane's already paying off. Yeah, you're not getting farm at the top lane for this Drow Ranger as much, but... That's a huge pickup there on RTZ. But, I mean, this is what we talked about. I talked about it assuming that it would be in the mid lane. But this Razor Viper matchup, people talk about the 1v1 matchup in terms of their skills and in terms of... It really is support rotations. It, that, it, to me, is the single biggest thing in, in the current meta environment that these early support rotations are just so huge. And something we also have to keep in mind is that Quark has Precision Aura. So that's huge for Viper early on in the that's game. That's true. And that's, that's going to give you that extra bit of damage, that extra bit of burst that you need. And they immediately rotate PPD down. You're the one to talk about how just making you kind of rotate early on in the game is, is a big advantage. And Navio oh, has yeah. already forced that rotation down to the bottom lane. So... Yeah, and, and, Vi and this is the thing. You give Viper that early level three. He hasn't spent his skill point yet, but he at least has the option of investing in that passive. He's going to get block. blocked in here, though, and this might be a kill to uh, get Arteezy back in this match. Yeah, PPD's running, and they have no follow-up. He hasn't up. spent his skill point. That's interesting. And they, they can't get anything done there, so... Okay, he spends it now on poison attack, and, and okay, wow, super early mech going to come online here for snaking as he already invests in the ring of regen. Yeah, so he wants to be involved here, and the crazy thing was they Force that rotation and then Rubik rotates to the top lane. Static is going to go through. The Fisher is not going to be able to block Snaking out. He does steal only 21 damage. And now PPD is just kind of down here fishing yeah, essentially be for RTZ. Too. And PPD, yeah, I mean, that's a clarity on him. I mean, he could even get caught out. Mid lane, Fear is actually going to get maybe brought down by Fog. He does have Telekinesis. He has this in his room. But uh, Fear is going to be a tanky uh, cookie to crack here because he's on the Brewmaster. He's got the Stab Shield. He's pretty tanky on a Brew, but yeah, this is a possibility. I think 
I think Centaur needs at least level four before they can make this kill happen, and they might just be waiting for that. He just hit it off this last creep wave. And wow, he has his skill at that point. Now he goes for the double edge oh, spear, getting low with the right click. Oh, Fog gets the kill. Uh, Nicely done. I, I, Navi US is so much better when they play like this. I, when they are rotating properly in the early game, Fog just feels like he's a step ahead. I mean, we talked the other night when we were casting about the game where they just made Smash's life so miserable on Invoker. And, and this is what they look like when they're doing these early game rotations right. I mean, you have a support duo going back all the way to TI, you know, I guess TI3 coming out with the, the old Dignitas squad. And actually, even further back when you think about, uh, you know, uh, Wei Ting right. and Fog together. So, these are two guys that are in each other's brains for the most part, I think. Where, where that might not be the case with PBD and Zai, although they're very... PBD and Zai are quite good when it comes oh, yeah. to chemistry as well, so... Yeah, I, I, but it's just a, it's a beautiful thing to see that the supports being so important. Okay, there is going to be a, a pause, but you know, there's a, a great uh, blog post by by Trauf a couple of days back about you know the reason that he thinks that EG has been able to stay a step ahead of the other NA teams and indeed you know take their place among the best in the world. And it, it really is all about the support play and, and the priority that they put on the supports not only early but throughout the match. Uh, it's a it's you know, definitely a good worth a read if you haven't checked it out yet uh and i wholeheartedly agree i mean you can see the difference that uh that ppd zai uh fogged and way too are able to make in these matches yeah and, and and fogged is just one of those players that has just such a fantastic understanding of the game we've talked about it you mentioned it earlier and it's really true because this guy has been playing dota for a long time he's been part of different teams here and, and he just he looks comfortable in the game right now and as a support, I think that's the most important thing is just understanding, just making sure, hey, listen, let's try to get a kill there. Hey, listen, let's try to get a kill top. Hey, I'm going to pull right now. Just just kind of making sure right. that you have everything going your way, just being the leader, essentially, of your team as well. So uh, that's that's a that's very, very well said. And I completely agree. Uh, you really do uh, in the support role, possibly more so than any other. It's just so important to be on the same page with your four teammates at all phases of the game. And, and we're definitely looking at two teams that uh, when they're playing well, certainly fit that description. I'm reminded of the time when Fear went back to going to support. Um... I, I loved that. I, his, his, his Nyx Assassin and his Rubik just made some magnificent plays. They, they didn't always have success with him in that role on those heroes. And, you know, you can talk about a lot of different things in that era of EG, but I, he made some great plays on those heroes. Yeah. So, well, he's in the core role now, so play calling is pretty much, uh, uh oh, <laughs> that is not good. Mm. That is rather unfortunate. That's probably one of the most unfortunate things I've heard in some time. Yeah, I'm, I'm, we're not going to say those four little letters, but, you know, unfortunately, lurking in the back of everybody's mind is, is what's been going on in Pro Dota 2 in, in the last couple of days. And, and really, you know, to whatever 13-year-old pimple-faced idiots out there have nothing better to do than to disrupt the good time for the rest of us, please F off. Go away. <laughs> That's the that's that uh, you've heard it sure from the host's mouth and, and to be honest it's there it's annoying go. but there's not much we can do about it in this situation. Okay. There's been some there's been some talk about other things we can get done, but uh looks like he is gonna come back in and right, hopefully that disconnection was only just a, a flower. An ISP thing. <laughs> right, some flowers and rainbows. He keeps, <laughs> he's trying to make everybody feel good. I appreciate this. I mean it's a classy guy. That's snaking. All, always positive, right? I mean, actually, that's definitely not true. As someone that's <laughs> hung out with him personally, I can tell you that he's definitely not always positive, especially when he's playing games, especially competitive gaming. But yeah, we'll hold back on that. Let's yeah. just say he doesn't it's like a topic to, for another time. He doesn't like to lose. Um, Skype Navi. is having an issue for snaking and and the Navi US squad, but thankfully we, we don't have too much of a pause knocking and wood. I, I hope we get back into things here in, in a minute. In a minute here, obviously Zai is kind of having a rough time because he's going to have to go to school and yeah, not too it, long from now. <laughs> yeah, he's going to have like an hour before he's due at school. I mean, yeah, poor guy. That, I, I would just I, take that, a sick day, honestly. I just like I'm not going. Yeah, That's I would it. too, but you know, who knows? I mean, I, it's a little hard to it's a little hard to start doing that regularly when yeah. you're in these multi-million dollar tournaments. I mean, most of the people at your school, including your instructors, have you know probably heard about it. <laughs> so it's just like, well, 
I, I mean, I, I would. I would definitely. I mean, I, I was never one for, for going to school all the time, but I, I guess for... Hey now, hey now, hey I, now. <laughs> you're talking, listen, to, a, you're I know, talking to an educator. I know who I'm talking to you with. <laughs> As someone that didn't go to, you know, didn't choose to go that route, I, I can understand the, the dilemma, but... Yeah, I, I, I got you. I mean, that's... It, it is going to be hard for a lot of these players, I think, going forward. And that's it, it's important that we, we do have resources flowing into the scene, uh, have a little bit more uh, structure and support for these players, because, you know, it, it, is, it, it is not easy uh, to balance, you know, school and and life and dota and i mean these players do have to have a life after competitive gaming they do but they can also it, it really it's really difficult because like this is your future that you're talking about and and dota while it, it could be theoretically a part of it you're, you're more likely going to have better success at least just more stable success down the road through an education so you yeah, have to make a decision. Do exactly. I go to school? Do I, you know, take a year off? You know, RTZ somehow managed to deal with it. Um, but I guess for him, the schedules were a bit better for the most yeah. part. I guess. But it, I mean, I think it's it's different when when you're more on the same schedule as the rest of your teammates. I mean, Zai being being like on a different continent. Uh, and it, the thing is, though, it's, it's only going to get harder because as the edges get smaller and smaller and there are more teams out there that have more time to practice, uh, the teams that are limited in their practice hours, it, it, it's going to be a serious issue. Yeah, that's a discussion for another day as we uh, jump back true. into the game. Four minutes in here and uh, a bit of a pause, but we're back into it now. Way is looking for that haste and Fear trying to get to it, but no such luck. There's the Grave Shield. MJW really wants this haste, and they're not going to get the kill, but I'm not even going to try for it here. They just wanted to secure the haste for MJW. He's going to head back to the mid lane where he's having a pretty good time, although down in CS by two to Fear. Bottom lane is really where we've been kind of putting our attention because Arteezy is not necessarily winning the lane when they have help from PBD oh, no, as well. Staking. They, they can't really lock him down or kill him, even with a Fisher. I mean, I don't know if there's enough damage here. And now Fogs were hitting it as well, so. Yeah, the, the saving grace is that, oh, oh boy. Okay, so the static link is probably going to make it so that PPD is okay here. But the Viper damage is still real. That Nether Toxin damage bonus doesn't just go away. Yeah, they're, they're doing some damage right now. There's the Stampede. Universe gets the kill on the top lane, and Korok getting caught out. PPD might fall as well. Looks like Snakey really wants this kill. They fabled him just to secure it there. And, uh, yeah, yeah, and right. Snaking is about to hit level 6, uh, now well ahead of the Razor. And once he hits level 6, Arteezy's got to be awfully careful. And it looks like they use the arrow combo in the top lane to get the kill on Korok. So he gets brought low. And this is one thing that they are doing well. It's just shutting down this top lane so Korok cannot get farmed. And I think that's very important to stop a draw range from getting up to level 6. To even getting Midas or Helmet the Dominant or whatever item that you pick up here for Korok. So... Yeah, it is important, but keep in mind, uh, the, the levels part of that is really important, right? A Drow Ranger, just because of her passive, she can she can get that agility bonus. She'll come back into a game rather quickly. Uh, yeah. But keeping her down before that level 6 as long as possible, you know, the Enfeeble is, is really, really annoying. I mean, and that's just the Enfeeble, let alone hitting another Nightmare Arrow combo, so... Yeah. And there is always that potential. Fogged is going to roam through. He's actually wrapping now. He's looking for maybe a kill here as Zai has worked his way out of the lane. Down to the bottom rune spot, Snaking was looking for it. The six minute rune, which is top, is going to be grabbed. That will be a haste rune for, uh, or rather, an illusion rune for MGW yet again. He pops the haste this time around, and Fear should be six. He is. He doesn't have mana to split, but they really can't bring him down anymore, I think. Uh, no, certainly not when he, once he gets a hold of his bottle, uh, he should be completely safe in the lane. And, and Snaking might. Nope, he's not even going to try for the Fisher there. That's probably a good decision, but uh, meanwhile, oh boy, Bananas is going to make the rotation down the lane. Uh, they EG the ward, Duke, yeah, they got the ward. They spotted it out. They're probably not going to try and dive this. And there's no blink dagger yet for uh, the Navi US Centaur. But the top lane, two heroes here, but three on the side of Navi US. TP coming back mid from MJW decides to not stay bottom. So there's more free reign for PBD and for uh, RTZ in that bottom lane. So. You look at it right now, this game's fairly close. I, I'd maybe oh, give yeah. the edge to Navi US, though, just because of how well bottom has gone for an offlane uh, Viper and, and the rotation mid that came out from Fog. However, that could change very quickly, and here still has the highest CS in the game, so. 
Yeah, I think that this is this is absolutely very even. EG have done a good job, kind of uh, coming back into the game after the early kills that uh, Snaking was able to push uh, to put up. He doesn't really have that big an advantage considering those kills. He's he is a level ahead, but uh, the farm advantage of the Razor is pretty minimal. Mm -hmm. Well, right now. A lot more farm going the way of Korok. He, he's getting more room in the stop lane now, so he's up to 24 last hits, and that's big. He's almost up to 6, which is even bigger. That passive is going to be huge. Yeah, uh, you have the wrapping. Selfie needs it, Sam. Silence as well, oh, just to make sure he sounds. can't leave the Fable at the right click. Soul Assumption as well. Oh, he just will get the kill. Oh. This is a good try, but nicely done from Korok. Yeah, he was actually... I think he might have been trying to stop and cast the Moonlight Shadow, but that does have a very... Uh, that does have a slight animation on it. Yeah. Mid lane, fear getting stomped on, but uh, he can still put some pressure here. And he's looking for a blink of zone. MJW and fear both trying to build towards that. Earthshaker does pick up the double damage room, but he's getting encroached on by snaking and MJW. Trish is going to come sure. through, and uh, that'll stop them from pushing up to the high ground. Uh, Meanwhile, Zai might be in some trouble up here. He does moonlight like shadow. Fog takes the nightmare away. Meanwhile, Fog gets aired up. There's the gust coming through. The star storm will finish him off with the right click going. And Universe does get the kill. Gust and the right click coming out from Korok is not enough to secure a counter kill on that Marana, but does push them back for the time being. So, yeah, and Fear is going to have his point dagger coming up here pretty soon, uh, well ahead of uh, of Banana Centaur. But he might go down here. He oh, no man, this is a big kill. Fisher, well timed for PBD. Soul Assumption. Fear, oh, he does go goodness. down. That must have been a full stack Soul Assumption. Coming out from way too, picking up the kill, and that's a big one as well. In the top lane, they also get a kill. Well, actually, that'll be Universe picking it up on Korok, so trades across the board. And Korok going down, that's very important, but the yeah. same could be said about Fear dying, so. Yeah, I think I think short-term, Korok did finish up his treads. I think short-term, the kill on the Brewmaster is just a little bit bigger because it set back his, set back his Blink Dagger for a couple minutes, uh, putting him closer with the Centaur in, in terms of item timing. And I, I think that's a big deal. If Fear had been able to get that Blink Dagger up by, you know, the 9 or 10 minute mark, uh, the, he'd have been able to exert a lot of pressure across the map. Yeah, and he absolutely. might he might go for it anyway down here. He's smoked up. Oh, Snay, boy, he needs to be very careful. He's pretty speedy with treads, though, and the thing is the way this pushed out. I, so if I, he stays I, even I, this far yeah. forward, he's in trouble. He's yeah. going to get caught out. They're going to go on him. Static link, there's the clap. Split as well. Snakey's going to try to TP out immediately. No way. You're making it there, my friend. There's the stampede, though. Oh, that might keep him alive. Yeah, the cyclone coming up. in from fear. That'll make sure that they grab this kill. Will he dispel it here now is the question. I don't even need to. Just right click him down with Razor. Nicely done. Yeah. Good game. Yeah, that, that was absolutely worth it. And I, I, I really like that by Fear. I think that's a very veteran move that you know, he just got set back a bit. Attack. I think a lot of players, when they take a kill early on like that, the tendency is to want to go right back to that lane. Well, you feel like you got to make up that ground. You feel like you're taking too big a risk uh, by rotating like that. I, I think that's very, very smart, though. Uh, you're not going to be looking for it as much as Snaking. You could tell that kind of caught him completely off guard. And it really does put Fear nicely back on track. One thing I want to talk about is that the Visage Familiars are now up. So two level sixes, yeah. the Drow, and now, of course, obviously, the Visage coming out together. And them getting involved in taking these towers, it's only a matter of time before they start becoming a force to be reckoned with, so... Yeah, and, and that's kind of, that's one of the things that convinced me about this Drow Visage combo, is I saw a couple of games that uh, C9 and Vici played this combo and they didn't really do all that well in lane and they still were able once they got the uh, the ultimates online and the familiars with those damage bonuses they still were able to have a huge impact on the game and that's to me the really important thing when you start talking about these these pocket strats and this draft wherever you want to call them is whether they can survive a bad early game and i think this one has shown that it can stampede snaking had he been hit by that arrow he probably goes down no, but yeah. he's, he avoids it he's actually dishing out the damage on fear now however the drunken okay. haste is gonna go and he's sinking is gonna get pushed back but all the meanwhile korok takes the top tier one tower and they put themselves in a pretty good position to take a, a hold of this this game early on so yeah, I, I think that it, they've survived the laning phase with, with actually a slight lead, at least in the gold department. Uh, and I think that, it, you know, they obviously have kept Korok down in this match, but especially with the Visage on the field, he's a long way from out. I, I think also at some point in time, he could just start uh, from the jungle and, and they can actually go for Roshan. They probably are going to do that pretty sure. early on. They don't medallion, though. I don't think so. No, they don't, and it's it's awfully risky this early. This, they they this smoke right into it. 
Yeah, this could get sniffed out so easily. Uh, they do have the blink up on Banana Centaur, though, and he is getting pinged out in the top lane. Mm. I think the real thing here is that there's nobody here defending this Sherwin Tower. Now they do rotate somebody right. down with the TP rotation from staking, and just by the gears being off the map alone, but there's the Fiend's Grip. However, Static Link gets canceled. I have Storm. Bog now gets Fisher. Big clap. One down. Maybe a second to follow. Bog's going to get Boulder Smash. He's done. Two dead. And they'll take this tower easily. Clap yeah, there. Nice use of the Fisher there. And that, that means that, oh, the road is so close. This is going to be so close. And they will grab it. Okay. And, uh, they, they see it at the tail end there. They saw the, the brewing go in there, but not enough, so. Wow, just enough time bought, despite the two deaths on bottom lane, just enough time bought for the draw ranger to finish off Roshan. And that was a beautiful Fisher into that fight by PPD. Yeah, really well played there. They did cut off uh, Fog from, you know, being able to jump in and yeah, I thought for a minute so. he was able to get to get he was going to be able to get in position to uh, turn the fiend's grip back on him, but that Fisher uh, ended that quickly. Mm -hmm. So now it's 13 minutes in, six to five. The score, EG are not nearly in as bad as a position as you know, some might expect. Uh, the the gold wrap, the the network wrap, rather. Right, 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 right. So he needs to sound a fear. Soul assumption. He tried to jump in, and I'm not sure what that was about. He wanted to kill on the visage. Wow. And now Razor's getting run down as well. They don't have any disable other than the uh, visage familiars, but they're way far behind. They cannot catch up with the Razor. So yeah, one kill is, though. This is just time. This is more time given to a Drow that's already got the Aegis, and uh, this is one of the. One of the few instances where I wouldn't just be screaming in my seat about Korok having an Aegis and, and farming the jungle, but he's doing the right thing here. This Aegis is really more a safety thing and to harvest the gold and XP from Roche more than anything else. Mm -hmm. And he picks up the appropriate item to go with his cosmetic. The Mask of oh, Madness yeah. has been, Radiance which is, by the way, that's one of the, if not the best cosmetic in the game, again, but. It's a great cosmetic, and, and more importantly, uh, it is such a great item for her. It's such yes. a great farming item on this hero. Yeah. It really is, it's better than a Midas on her, in my opinion. There's no reason to go home with the Dominator when you have the Mask of Madness available to you in that situation, other than obviously the increased damage that you can take, so. Yeah, I, I, Illidan has gone satanic on Drown, it's not bad. Initiation mid here. Double edge. The great city brought low. There's a Fisher to come in. Solo subsidy. Arteezy gets melted, however. They take the tower, but what else can they get with this arrow now stopping Snakey for a bit? Moonlight Shadow as well. They want to keep going, but they have no detection, it looks like, on them. Or at least on the ground. And uh, yeah, they have no detection at all, actually, between Fog and Waitsu. Although, having a lot of money, they, they need to buy detection here. I mean, this is a Mirana oh, that you can do it, Fear does have split, by the way. They're gonna try to right click him down. Maybe make him force it, but he just blinks away. PPD denies the tier one in the bottom lane, and all the while, I mean, that's again without Korok being involved in these fights. He's just probably yeah. top, and he's up at the top of the net worth now as well. Yeah, that, that's it, it's starting to get scary, right? Because when you compare how thoroughly they were able to shut down Korok early to now how quickly he's been able to create that 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 net worth gap i mean he's still very close to the marana but that's that's only going to get bigger over time and they can pretty much push your lanes at any time with these familiars as well. Mm -hmm. That's the scary thing is just kind of having them cut creep waves and just be generally annoying. And I, I saw a lot of gaming do this. It's just oh, anytime, yeah. uh, you know, another team was trying to pressure, they would just take the, the familiars, cut the creep wave, and just kind of say, like, use it as a Nagasaur and illusion, which I've seen burning them so often and just kind of be annoying in that regard. But. No, it's I mean, just annoying to deal with in this situation. It's It's just so. It's so obvious, but so important, and you know we don't talk about it a lot because it's boring. But just being able to manipulate the lane equilibrium at all phases of the game, especially even as you go into the late game, is just so important. Two smokes now, one for each squad. Snakey oh, did yeah. get spotted out picking up that invis rune, and now heading bottom is going to be MJW. They assume that there's going to be a rotation down here, and they're correct. And it is actually going to be the Razor. He's still smoked up, and he's going to walk right into Fog, who might tell if he needs to sim, and actually uses the clap as well. Spell was stolen. That's going to be Plasma Field. That was a great spell to steal to kill Arteezy, but he's not oh, done. He will try to CP away. And that's just a lot of damage that he just survives and tanks through, so.
Yeah, Oof, but they're not close. in the woods yet. Yeah, Universe is getting caught. Or, well, he's not caught out just yet, but he's got to be careful. He does have the Yasha, by the way, which gives him that increased boost speed, so he'll just make his way out of there. And uh, EG looks like they might try to trade here. Uh, they have both Fear and Zai up here in the top lane this as uh, not... Navi US is taking the bottom Radiant's tower. This is... I don't know about the trade. Know about yeah. Uh, Korok actually might get caught out. He's got to try to keep it away. Silence on Fear. He can't get his split off, and even if he did, hmm. I don't know if they would have been able to stop him from TPing, so... Yeah, nice one like, thing that might have made that trade worth it uh, is getting a kill on Korok at this point, which is so much more important now that he's got his levels on him. But, but he had the edges too, which is the that's thing. That's true, that's true. I'm not sure if he had the blink on him, but if he did, he would be able to blink after the edges almost certainly. Uh, he did not so. have the blink on him, but no. uh, that's, they have plenty of time to respond. Yeah, that's true. They take the tier 2 tower in that bottom lane, and Korok is again still the net worth leader. TPing into the mid lane is going to be Zai. Looking for Beans, he'll find him, but where's the follow up? They don't have the arrow sailing through just yet, but here's RTZ with the static with MJW caught way out of position. There's no reason for you to be there, my friend. You watch right through, just kind of sightseeing. And now they're going to turn this into a fight. Although RTZ, oh, very low Moonlight Shadow, they nice cannot finger. get the kill. Quark in a lot of trouble. Again, he has the Aegis, though. The split still. going in. Gus coming through. Meanwhile, fogged up near Cyclone now. Can they be effective? Can they get a kill? Quark just take any of that plasma field damage. Arteezy getting low, there's the Echo Slam from PVD, Zai getting brought down, but already two dead on Navi US, Spear gets a double kill, and now they will continue going, they're looking for way too four dead, and EG take a huge fight, snaking the last to left, he will try to get the kill on Zai, and will finish him off, now there's going to be the Viper Strike, Arrow sailing through a disconnect and sneaky for a moment. He's gonna mech up and try to survive. PPD's like, please, no. Come on, let me live. And now he turns to universe and snaking. Looks like he might fall stampede. He wants to get him out of there. Are you kidding He's me? He's gonna snaking. live. My god, 50 HP, he lives. Wow, I thought that was a team wipe in favor of EG all day and all night. Snaking comes in and uh, salvages something out of that fight. I mean, EG had just gotten so low there. Did you see how low Arteezy was yes. relatively early on in that fight? But EG just spacing things out perfectly, limiting Korok. The plasma field from the Razor just hit him right as he came back up from the ages. Couldn't blink away. Uh, it's a, a great fight coming out of EG and nice play at the end there by snaking to salvage something and by the way I, I, this build by Quark I absolutely Radiant's love I think people under really underestimate the uh, blink dagger as a DPS item on draw it's the same kind of principle that we saw eternal envy building blink dagger on clinks when you're when you're in, using that strafe you don't want to have to attack move you want to just be able to stand there and right click same principle for mask of madness on draw yeah I mean it's yeah it's the exact same thing and and honestly, you know, Quark can get some damage off in these fights, but that last engagement, if that was anything of like what the rest of this game is going to look like now, he's going to have to climb. The top leader was Universe for some time, but uh, it's, about, it's changing hands it's consistently between Universe and Quark, so... It's fine though. That, the, the thing about Drow's damage output is it, it, it's only going up from here, and especially as Korok finishes B, his BKB or a damage item, he's he's gonna have even more options in how to, he approaches this fight. This said, a gank from Fear here would be huge. You know, there's the split going in. Korok's gonna try to TP out immediately, but again, that split just too quick coming out from Fear, and the arrow was gonna come through anyway. So, huge pickup coming out now for EG again, and. Yeah. Uh, they they should have the net worth lead. Dyer's no, actually still going in favor of now the US, but a lot of that I think is in towers. And this tier one tower will give maybe some of the advantage back to evil geniuses here. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, it, it's really, really important delaying a Korok. You can't see with the old growth while he's going towards the BKB. And delaying that item is just so critical for EG right now because I think once he has that up, they're going to be able to push lanes with impunity. Might get another kill on Fogged here. They do miss the arrow, but the Beans Grip is up yeah. and ready to go, and he's done. That's it. He'll fall, so. Nice pick off yet again. Two down now for Navi US, and EG are still staying in the top lane. They say, listen, we can maybe take a fight here, so. But they will back off. They're actually going to just push out their lanes here, get RTZ some more farm. It looks like he's going for BKB. Well, he has the other club stuff so to talk about, and Veer should be going for an axe. I'd imagine he did go for the Vlads early on, but at this point, I think he probably builds into the Vlads here. We'll see. Yeah, he is could, he he could easily go Battle Brew if he really wants to. Yeah, oh, wow. he is going to go Battle Brew with the Hyperstone. I really like this. This it, this keeps this hero relevant. People say that Brewmaster falls off so hard around 35, 40 minutes. He doesn't have to. I mean, you look at the way his passive scales. It's a great ability. Uh, he can be relevant later on in the game. He doesn't have to be just as ulti.
Yeah, absolutely. He can dish up the right click, especially with an assault draw. It's one of the best items to do so. Right. Unless I imagine that's what he's going to build. Oh, right? that's definitely what he's going to build. Yeah, AC is the build. Remember that uh, when Bru goes into his ulti, that any auras that he has stays with the Earth Panda, and the Vlad's are on the AC are a boost stack. Yeah, that's huge. Archie's going to get caught out, stomped up as well, and I don't think he'll survive this one. No. A lot of damage coming through, but they have to commit a lot. That took a bit longer than I imagined than it would have to uh, kill the, you know, the raids there, so they did pick him off, but. Quark's gonna blink away now, and the rest of them are gonna get out of here, get out of dodge, oh essentially. Clap comes through from fear, just yeah, looking for a fall, optimistic, kill him. but that's all right. Oh, and now oh, Fog, uh, Roshan is up. Yeah, yeah, Fog's... Okay, he actually has no TP for another eight seconds. By the way, Rosh is up, and this is gonna be probably not the USS yet again, so... Oh, yeah, there's, there's no way EG can contest here. This is gonna go down so fast, even without the medallion. You're taking a... Pretty big ass kicking from Cork specifically. Uh, Sneaking as well. He'll blink forward just as gonna sell his TP scroll probably or something along those lines. And he'll pick up the Aegis yet again. And this gives again the advantage back to uh, Nav US. So this is the yeah. problem is that EG, they win these fights like that four person wipe in, in the mid lane. They can't even get Roshan. Uh, they couldn't get any real towers off of it other than the tier one of the top lane. So despite that big team wipe or big team victory, I should say. I mean, what do they really do what, in that situation? This is what uh, what the Drow Visage strat does. Just puts constant pressure on the lanes wherever you want on the map, and it only gets worse as Visage puts his aggrams up. I, I thought there was some possibility that uh, that Peter might cho might have chosen to go that way too. Might have chosen to go the Athos first in that game. This is something we've seen coming out of Aoi in the last several days. He's actually been building Athos before Ags, doing such a great job with the, abusing that long range. Play. 100 range on that Atos to sort of control the movements of the enemy supports and their approaches into fights. But I, I mean, obviously, in the position that they're in in this game and the importance of controlling the lanes, I think Ags first is definitely the way to go here. Yeah, and <laughs> to be fair, it is it is AUI, and they, it they is, call it, but they call it a rod of AUI for a reason. But. <clears throat> But he, that I doesn't mean, neglect that it's a good, it's still a fantastic item. And he uses it really well. I mean, uh, uh, God, w which team were they playing? He did it against, uh, I think it was, a, yeah, it was Alliance. And um, who was it on Alliance that was playing a Leshrac that had gone uh, Edict and Edict, Split Earth, and Nova. He had, actually had zero points in Lightning uh, quite a ways away into the game. And the, I mean, the Atos just ruins that Leshrac. Yes. Like when he's slow, he can't get into the fight and do any damage. I mean, I asked Ali about it on Twitter and he's like, yeah, I, I just kept both of their supports completely out of the fight. I'm like, oh, WP, dude. That's it. <laughs> and But in this situation, I think it behooves him just to keep the pressure on these lanes, keep them pushed out, and it even takes some towers in the back end of it. And on top of that, there's for an sure. Aggrim Scepter now for a Viper too. So if they want to fight, they can. Although fighting into a Fear Primal Split is difficult and, and certainly not what you want to have to do. So maybe Navi US could just win this game through sheer split push alone. Although it won't be the most, uh, it's not the way Quark plays the game, but you know, they can certainly take it and, and even get a 2-2 tower in this top lane if there's nobody that's rotating back, so. Yeah, but I mean, that's kind of the thing that, what I've seen from Navi US lately is is they've shown just the discipline to play different styles and and have have a little bit more flexibility in their game plans and their approaches. I mean, it's you know we all see Korok and respect his ability to just go freaking ham on Ursa, but the fact that they can approach the game like this in a little bit more disciplined fashion, play different strats, abuse the split push, this is kind of the next step in their growth as a team, and I, I really do think regardless. Of the outcome of this game, I think what we've seen in this series tells me that they're getting there. Yeah, absolutely. I think that this is a team that has a tremendous upside bottom lane. Yeah. Fear is stalking snaking, but not looking to go for a kill here. No, they, um, they, they don't have all their heroes in position. There's something I wanted to talk about but for the life of me, just escaping. Oh, the true site dilemma here for Navi US. They need a gem, I feel like. And they, they certainly could get the farm on, on which I mean, he farmed up an Agon except he has 1200 gold. I mean, this is a support that has uh, actually a decent amount of GPM when you think about it because of his visage familiar. So I feel like just get a gem on mm. one of your heroes here and make sure I, that you don't get caught out by Invis or, or Moonlight I Shadow. So. A gem is is a risk. Uh, we're gonna have a fight here, so I don't want to go too much into that. But 
uh, the vision you've seen has played such a key role. Stampede, Korok gonna try to get out. Arrow doesn't connect. Meanwhile, they grab the kill on the band on the backside. Korok still getting chased down. Gus coming through. There's the Mantis style to get out of it, but Korok still should be okay. Yeah, Although he's very low in health, he has the Aegis, and I think that's the biggest thing. They're gonna try to TP everybody back. This is familiars. Oh, PPD almost got stunned up there, but lucky to survive, so. Yeah, that, 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 that I was a little bit afraid for EG because Korok had the had the Aegis and his BKB was flying out in the courier. If if EG had chosen to, to, to force that fight, I'm not sure how that would have turned out for them. Yeah, good patience coming out from EG and well, Navi US are able to secure one kill on the Bane, which I didn't expect to happen, but I think the problem right now is that these supports for at least EG supports are pretty, are pretty, pretty. I mean, Sai actually oh somehow gosh. has a mech, but that gives PPD pretty much nothing. So poor. Yeah, he has nothing except and for his soul ring. Boy, and it, it just, this is why during the draft, I, I was pretty sure that it would be uh, a PPD on the Bane and, and maybe Zion on the Earthshaker, although now that I think about it, I don't know that I've seen him play that hero much. Uh, the farm on Earthshaker would just be so beneficial right now. Even just a blink dagger on that hero could change these fights a lot. We talked about how good PPD can be on that hero. I've seen yeah, it. Yeah, you really can be. I've seen it really, really, really go well for him, but in this game it's just not looking that way. And uh, you got all of a sudden, sudden now. They're, they're losing tier two towers suddenly, and, and Fear can maybe fight with them, but he's really wanting to get towards that uh, Assault Kuros. Viper Strike coming in. Zion Trouble is going to try to get some heroes out, but there's the split coming in. This might be the fight EG are looking for. Brock up in the air, Snake King getting stampeded out now. Fear is still in the primal split. There is the Aegis. Great blink from Korok to get out of there. As soon as that Dispel Magic comes, he's spamming his Blink Dagger button. He blinks away, and they don't lose a single hero in that engagement. And now they can actually fight if they wanted to. You look at EG, they're overextending, but Snakey actually TPs out and heads bottom instead. Yeah, that's fine. And, and just the power of this crowd massage strat is that you know, now the US don't have to fight. If they see an advantage, obviously they'll turn and you will see a lot of arrows fired very, very quickly. But they don't have to fight at any point if they don't want to. They can force all of these lanes. They can get damage on EG's tier 3 towers. EG in the very uncomfortable position, especially as the Radiant team, of knowing that they are the ones that really for the rest of this match they're, they're going to have to force the action yeah and the good thing is though for EG at this point Korok is going to lose his Aegis in another couple of moments here it's at 30 seconds a couple of seconds ago so that'll go down and now they have more room to work with here but the problem is you can't have a fight like that where you get a really great clap split off and you don't get a kill Right. That just seems impossible to me, especially... The thing, though, I think is that RTZ wasn't really involved in the beginning of that fight. And maybe had he been there a bit earlier, they could turn things around and maybe get a kill as well. But maybe that was just my perspective. From what it seemed like, he just wasn't in that fight for the beginning of it, so... Yeah, and I mean, it, it's just, again, if you're PPD, that 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 2,000 gold, you know, the next patch will be 20, 2,100 gold now uh, that he needs for his Flink Dagger. It just, it seems like light years away. And how much of a difference would it be making in these fights? But uh, he has played very well this game. It's just unfortunate that you're not seeing the potential of that hero. And the problem with this hero is that... Well, the problem with their lineup more so than anything is that they just dedicate so much farm to Zai. And PPD is just one of the most selfless people when it comes to, you know, farming and, and just making sure that they keep the vision up. They, they get all the little items they're supposed to get, but they give so much to Zai. I mean, so much. I mean, he got a mech yeah, they do. on a Bane, so, I mean... Yeah, that's the and, thing. That's the trade-off. Interestingly enough, a mech and not a blink. That That's the... His item pro progress really has stopped after the blink, and this is... Bane is just... I, if you've ever played this here on a pub, like, he, he is... It's like dental work, trying to farm on this freaking hero at this point in the game. I mean, he's just nothing to farm with. He's got decent right click, but that alone is not good enough. And Stampede away, coming out, now the US realizing they're not in the best position. And, and it looks like whenever there is some action that's going to break out, it all of a sudden just halts with either a Stampede, or a well-timed Blink Dagger, or just better map awareness. Yeah, that's that's sort of the unspoken necessity in that draw the side strat, or at least a very large advantage you can give yourself is the ability to disengage, right? You, you along with the push potential all of the map these heroes, you really do want to have as much 
potential to pick the location of fights as you can. That's what make that's what making the centaur really good here because you know, they have that fissure, but without the blink dagger, PPD can't really put the hit the perfect one anymore. No. They have some level of control coming out from the bane, but a, a card for EG to keep Navi US committed to a fight. No. Yeah, absolutely. And I, 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 honestly, it almost feels like Navi was just like, listen, we're gonna make sure that you know Zai's late to school, or we're gonna make him feel miserable what? because they're 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 just absolutely housing them on map control and just map awareness right now, and, and yeah, maybe just breaking the will of EG. But this is how you play this strat. I mean, this is maybe we've seen some other teams recently play this strat, have a little earlier push timing, and I, I do think now the US, there were a couple points that they could play this. A little bit more aggressively, but I don't mind them playing safe. And hey, look, a BKB on a centaur. I, I hear that's a pretty good item, Mike. <laughs> Damn, the flames real. The shots have been fired. What do you mean? I just that's a good item. <laughs> it's um, a pretty good item. I'm gonna have to agree yeah, with you. That's all I'm saying, dude. <laughs> I mean, I say it anyway. At the very least, he's bought a BKB on his hero this game. So there you Korok, go. Korok is now he's ready to fight. If if it so comes down to a fight, he can. And uh, he also has a crystal, so that Daedalus is gonna yeah. get done pretty soon, and that damage is gonna be insane. Even like against Arteezy, you can just static link. I think the biggest issue now is that Naviwis are just okay with just split pushing until they're ready to fight. I think they're not, you know, intentionally making this game boring. They're just like, let us get our farm, let us get our items, let us take Roshan of the Aegis. No, it's the, just standard Dota. It really is what it comes down to. It, it, it's it's good strategy. It, it might not be exciting. It might not be what people would ideally like to see, but it is good strategy. Mm -hmm. They realize they have every reason to sit back and make EG come to them. Yep. There's there's no reason for them to take a fight unless it's on, on their own terms. So EG are, are looking to try to take Roshan, and this is the time that you think it would be up. But again, a long duration, almost max at this point. Duration Roshan respawn. So unfortunate yeah. for EG that they can't actually, you know, take Rosh when all oh, the lanes wow. were the mid lane is at least pushed down. They're, well, they're being that. very really aggressive. Is like twenty seconds short of, of max duration. It can still confuse the hell out of me that the oh, clock no. goes to twelve when they are really right next to an observer ward. A really well placed observer ward. And that's one thing also from Fogged is that his observer ward placements are apt to be clutch. And so they're gonna viper strike, they're gonna just gonna fight this right now. Nightmare coming in, but it's high in trouble. BKBs are popped by a couple of heroes. RCC is running right in. There's the static link now coming. Korok getting low. He doesn't have that Aegis, mind you. And now you've got to back away from Navi. Was everyone getting extraordinarily low? They lose staking. They lose the visage. They might even, might even lose more coming through as Fear. Oh my goodness. Fear is running over them right now. And they even lose the courier as well. They're going to look for this tier 2 tower now. What a great fight. And it just feels like every time EG want to fight with um, Fierce Primal Split, they get the engagement going their way. But what can they get out of this? They've gotten a tier 2 in the mid lane. Can they make it worth it now? Broshan is up. So can they go there? They're going to actually back off and go to the top lane and go home. So. Well, I mean, the the big thing, right, was the decision by Navi US to initiate in on the Bane. And that really left Fear free to get the perfect split off, left Earthshaker free to do, to get something done in that fight, even without the Blink Dagger. And it's kind of the wrong hero to initiate in on. Yeah, that, that was a but, bold decision. Uh, that, all that said, all that said, Korok probably still scores another Aegis for himself, and this will be cheese as well, friends. Yeah, I, I think EG, they, don't, they should know that it's up now. They have to make a decision. They have to get over there. This isn't going to fall as quickly as it did in the uh, Ursa game, but it's still falling quite fast. So EG have to get in there. Now the US arrow, Korok is oh, arrow. perfect! Ortiz is going to run right in. Static Link is going to go as well. He pops the eye of the storm. Fisher Korok is going to fall. MJW is low as well. Zai, he's going to get brought down. But there's the echo slip from PBD. He doesn't need a blink dagger. Fall getting chased out on the backside. Now Stake can go into work here. Buyback coming in for Quark. They want Roshan. They want to finish it off. And Ortiz, he does get the Aegis. He's manning upon staking. He'll fall. There's the primals, but just at the right time. Korok falls. Double kill for Fear. Triple kill for Ortiz. A team wipe and probably more. Now that the spell magic is gonna come out, RTZ still draining that damage. My god, what a fight coming out from EG when they needed it the most. Boy, we said EG had to come to them and well, they just came. That was an unreal fight. Great execution there out of EG. The patience, and, and basically, we can say all we want about that fight and I can yell and get excited, but that was the era. That was the arrow that took Korok completely out of the fight, and from there, EG just snowballed in.
The universe is like, oh God, he's he's so, he's so fucking good. The universe is just so good at this game. It's ridiculous. It blows my mind how good universe can be at sometimes. And, and that's the thing about universe is that he'll have these games where you feel like you don't say his name for like half an hour and then he just and like, then he's like oh yeah play. he just won the game he's oh by the way right. okay you know he'll just do a refresh ravage and just like win you the game right there just it it's unbelievable to me how this guy who by the way we were I, he, we were just like you know his Aku's play last game was not that great but again that comes down to the hero and this game he's just like you yeah, have a man to style out in the owner by the way just in case you were wondering you know what i was doing for the past 36 minutes like how? How are you so good at this game? How are you so much better than almost any other offlaner in the current meta? I don't understand it, but I'll, I'll let my universe gushing stop. I apologize. But. Uh, I, look, if there's a guy you got to gush about, uh, I mean, I'll gush about Zai. I, I don't mind people gushing about universe. That's, that's the thing. I, I, people talk about Arteezy and like Arteezy is amazing. He might be the third best player on his own team. As I, good as he is. I'd argue. I'd argue that he's 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 behind almost everybody in his squad. I mean, I, actually, that's and how much of a luxury is that? And that's the thing. It's it, it's it's not a slight to Arteezy. It's it's just no, it's definitely not. Team. I I think Arteezy is a fantastic player. The whole back on his fork is getting caught out yes. again. Being stripped, and, and this is definitely a kill going yeah. the way of EG. And another one that all of a sudden they are starting to snowball out of control. Yeah. They are taking fights. They're taking kills. They're taking Dyer's towers. Tower. Evil geniuses. Attack. They want this. I mean. You know, in some sense, you've seen EG win some fights in this match and not be able to take objectives, but uh, there comes a point. You kind of reach critical mass where eventually you give up enough, their advantage becomes enough, and, and they just go kill your base. And I think, ultimately, I think Navi US might have given up just a little bit too much to this EG lineup. Yeah. And, and just in time, too. I, I really think that, that in five even... Ten, even five more minutes in, I don't know that EG would have been able to come back like this. Yeah, on the Spear split coming in, they want to finish this game off. There's the Stampede, That's but it. now you got way too caught out. There's the Cyclone as well. And meanwhile, the mid Raxes are going to be decimated here. Freer needs to back away. Snakey is doing some work. There's the Glyph popped, and they still don't have Brock for another 15 seconds. This could be the Camel, or the straw that breaks the Camel's back, rather. It's used a cliche. Fog coming in. He has a chance on him, by the way. He's still Star Storm. There's the Fisher coming in. And I think EG probably back up now. They don't want to deal with Quark when he's back alive, so. Okay, I, I was doubting for a minute there, all right, that uh, that Navi US were going to be able to protect that mid set of racks. And I think two racks down is the threshold that we talk about in a lot of these pro matches. It's just very, very difficult to come back from, uh, much more so than one. So Navi US still with a fighting chance here, but that, that whole idea of EG having to come to them, that's gone. Yeah, that, that was. Uh... It's not a good couple of minutes for Navi US to put it lightly. I mean, yeah, you're gonna have your daily stuff for a spot now, but in this position, you have to keep your top lane pushed out. And another fight like that, I mean, they still have the Aegis on Arteezy as well. And I think that also yeah. had a, that was a cheese with, roast too. With the butterfly. Now what happened to that is? cheese originally, by the way? I don't know what happened to it. But oh, gosh. I guess we'll never I, know. I thought I saw it, and now I'm... Oh, my freaking brain. <laughs> Unbelievable. Just I thought I saw it happen, and now I have no idea. That, yeah. That's great. That's Thanks, brain. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, unfortunate that we don't know what happened to the cheese, but at this point in time, I, I'm not sure if it matters here. A smoke I'm coming sure up from we'll EG, and, in the chat and Korok is actually dead, I think. Yeah, Korok's yeah, actually dead. he's screwed. Maybe? Oh, the cast animation. Yeah, they get the fish off. He's, he's, he's actually dead. Okay. Well, he has no buyback again for, well, actually 50 seconds, so not that bad. And he will have it. He'll have it by the time he's uh, the buyback. Ready. You know, that's yeah, not another but... positioning here that comes up. From... I mean, I guess you have to take a risk and just try to farm, farm across the map, but that's just this really intelligent play now coming out from uh, EG. And on top of that, Arteezy getting some birds, one of them. Fear wants the other, and go grab the other one. There's a third one still, but now they're going to go for the racks, and another racks, and I think this game's probably over. I think now the U.S. can't really come down from two racks down, even with the heroes that they have.
Yeah, I, I agree. I think that last pick off the clock kind of salted the game away. And, and uh, he's played well enough for them to win, but EG made the plays when it counted. Yeah, 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 sneaking is probably going to go down here, and that will steal the game. Yeah, he does have buyback. He's going to BKB as well, but they're getting pushed so far back. They're looking for the tier fours now. So there hasn't been a tier two taken in that bottom lane, so. First tier four is gone. Our TZ eye of the storm is still going to work here. The duration of that to run its course. Echo Sled coming in. Yeah, and yeah. finally with his blink dagger blowing up. Snake King about to fall low and he will go down in this game. MJW getting chased as well. Cyclone up in the air. KB yet again for TZ. And they are keeping them herded inside the base. And it looks like EG should advance here to the grand finals with one game advantage in that best of five series. However, Navi US not willing to give this one up, not yet anyway. Fear now has to blink away, and the ancient is low, and uh, Navi US has uh, pushed them back for the time being. RTZ! Oh, he's got 58 HP, they're looking for him, the Earth Charge. He's still alive, the Sheba's Guard, he's gonna run it in suicide for whatever reason, I'm not sure. And, uh, Fear is gonna get brought down as well, so. Yeah, so they will extend this game out a little bit farther, but uh, buybacks all around on the EG side. Uh, not not really a concern at this point. Ancient down to about two thirds of its HP, and Navi US in in full desperation mode here. Short of a throw from EG, which I mean wow. historically, <laughs> listen, you look at the courier they have that that should be the throw in hit effect. It is. Uh, uh, it, th this would be, yeah, this would be throwing an awfully awfully heavy object. Uh, nothing is impossible, but yikes. <laughs> Yikes indeed. Now we have a 12k net worth lead for evil geniuses and a 5,000 experience lead where there was once an 8,000 net worth lead for Navi US right before that big fight happened and they got absolutely yeah. decimated. So, no, I mean, that EG just uh, with that fight around the Roche pit, I'm, I'm still kind of wrapping my head around it, my friend. They just grabbed hold of this game by the throat and, and really haven't let go. Uh, small opening here for Navi US. They are going to try the five man push, and, and this is kind of the last hurrah, I think, for their lineup. And God, that, that Fisher is so annoying. Yep, they can't even push up to the high ground now. Staking gets arrowed, although it does really no damage at this point. The stun is really the most important thing. And they get. A little bit of damage before everyone respawns, and they are, they still have the glyph now. So evil geniuses, they're 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 ready to fight. There's no buybacks on Navi US squad, so they just have to hope for the best fight possible. RTC PKB is up, steals so much damage from Snaking, he gets forced in further, and he gets speed script as well. Snaking is gonna fall. He's arrowed. He's done. And now they're gonna look for more. I'm not sure what else they can grab on the back end of this, but a good pickup. They will call no, no GG. Call. That makes this sense. Is yeah, I, I think that was the last hurrah, and Snake gets caught out, and boy, a little uh, victory echo slam there out of PPD. Wants to show off that blink dagger that took him so long to get, but it, it, it came in when it counted, and he made the plays with it. I am so impressed with both of these teams. Obviously, we've praised EG many times during this series, but this is probably the highest level of Dota I've seen out of Navi US. And you can say what you want about, you know, maybe EG went a little bit crazy with their picks in game two. Uh, but Navi US have shown that they can compete against the best teams in the world. And I, I really, as I said early on in this game, regardless of the result, I, I think that this really bodes well for them in their future. Absolutely, I agree 100%. And it's an exciting, bright future for a lot of American Dota, North American Dota, South American Dota included. Um, a good sign of things to come, at the very least. Evil Geniuses take the 2-1 victory here in this best of three series. They'll move on. They'll have a one-game advantage in that best of five series. And, well, we aren't done yet. Navi US, they're actually going to go down to the lower bracket, and they will face off against Sneaky Nick's Assassins and another great American classic, because that'll be tomorrow. Uh, I'm not sure at what time, but... There'll be the best of three and the best of five to fin finish things off here. And, of course, the Starlight America qualifiers as well. So, thank you so much for joining us, guys. My name is Vaughn.